Hey YouTube researchers and everybody who are serious about the word of the Father, this video today is, is focused at those people who are just starting, trying to find out where to start with reading the Bible. Every information is just everywhere and there's a whole lot of confusing things in the Bible. So they really don't know where to start, but they're just trying to, you know, do their own study in the Bible. So this video is giving you a sort of a guide on where you can start and why you, you know, I recommend that you start with these books and why. And I mean, I'm giving you a, a nice little guide to, you know, so you know where to start and why and what kind of benefits you're going to gain if you start reading that part of the Bible before every other part. Okay, so if you if you in mind you've told yourself you want to know more about the Father and everybody, you know, you know, then you will start here. You know, where to start? I'm mean, here's my guide. Now I'm giving you first a list of everything. Now, first of all, when you're doing this study guide, the the Bible study that you now decided you want to do. You must know what Bible books to start with, okay? So know the essence of the context of each Bible book. In other words, what I just explained to you now is you must know where to start, which Bible book, and the essence of and the context of each Bible book. Now, I'm going to give you in this video the essence of each Bible book, and it's a short little video, so it, it gives you a nice little context on where to start, why, okay? So the first thing when you are in, engaging into this studying journey, then is to know more about what, where, um, what Bible to start, where to start. And then number two is know the difference between scripture and Bible. Know the difference between Bible and scripture. So that means read scripture within the Bible. Okay. I hope that one is, is clear. Because if you still, if you mix the Bible and scripture and you don't know the difference between Bible and scripture, you might end up reading Bible and start interpreting scripture using Bible. Okay, I'll explain to you what the difference is, but I'm just reading to you that when you're reading, when you're doing the study, number two is know the difference between Bible and scripture. Okay? All right, I hope you got that. And then the next one is learn to separate false doctrine from true doctrine. I'm showing you in this video too. Here I'm just reading. Learn to separate false doctrine from true doctrine. That means focus on the writings where the Father himself talks and where the Savior, the Son himself talks. Okay, that's when you're going to see, okay, here's the two, true doctrine, here's the false doctrine. Because where the Father himself and where the Savior himself talks in the Bible, a lot of the Bible is even highlighted in red where the Savior is talking or the Father is talking. They highlight it in red, but then some don't. But you'll see when the Father says, I, Sonini, am saying to, you know, or some of the Bible will say Jehovah, some will say Jesus, whatever. But when the Father himself is talking or the Son is talking, then you know that is scripture. So focus on that. False doctrine versus true doctrine. So focus on mainly the ones where the Father is talking. Now you're starting, so you just want to focus on the stuff that I'm telling you now as a guide. Okay? Now the fourth one is watch some of the uh, YouTube videos on Google. You know, Google some information on some idea, you know, about the last days, when the last days, you know, read more about it. Now you can go to my channel. I'm not trying to advertise my channel now, but I'm just giving you a guide because in, in my channel, I've collated all the information that is important for either beginners or advanced people who are trying to know more about the Father. So you can just save yourself time and just go and watch my channel. And my channel will show you, this is what the Father said. This is what the implication of this. This is the law. And, and in my channel, some of my videos are even showing the deceptions that you might take years to even find out. Because I've been doing this for years, too. Trying to investigate, research, you know, the spiritual discernment and stuff. So I've gone through a lot to actually get the information that I've revealed in, the, in my channel. So you can save yourself time and read my, and, and watch my channel. So number four is saying, watch some YouTube video and Google some information about the last days. So, so you can get some idea on the current events and compare with the scripture. Now, you know, now the scripture, Bible versus Bible. So compare with the scripture and reading and, you know, if you see and start comparing with what you've read already. Okay. So that's the essence. So save yourself time again. I'm once more, I'm saying just zoom into my channel and you get all the information you need. And then you can still watch other people's videos too. But then 
you know, you make your own discernment. Okay. So here is the first one. The first one is know the Bible books to start with. Okay. Now I'm going into detail on each one of these points. Okay. Explaining to you now, this is the Bible books you can start with and so forth. Okay. And why I'm recommending that you start by, with this one. Okay. So start with the book of John. That's the first book you got to start with. Book of John in the beginning was the word. word, word that's how you're going to see that's the book of John. Because there's another John 1, 2, 3, further down the line. No, not that one. This one I'm talking about is the one that starts with in the beginning was the word and word was which you'll see it. So start reading that book word for word and understand everything that the Savior is saying. Because the Savior talks a lot in that book. And he's talking with his 12 apostles and everything is just so clear. Okay, so start understanding that, that book. And now I'm saying, why, why start with the book of John? Okay, it will give you a good insight on what the Savior went through and said. Okay, the information is directly from the apostle who was close with the Savior. Okay, some people say, you know, it was John who was close with the Savior. Some people say it was Judas. It don't matter. But whoever it was who wrote that book, the book of John, is the disciple that was closest to the Savior. Okay, so it don't matter who you want to call him, but that's the disciple that wrote that book. So he got a whole lot of information, intimate information that you know, okay, no, this one was only revealed to this guy because he was closest to the Savior. So you'll even see the level of information, the details that the occurrence, what happened that the last supper, it was Martha, it was Miriam who did this, it was Mary. So you'll see, uh, you know, Compared with the book of Matthew and the other look and name, they'll just say, oh, there was a lady who poured perfume in the, and another lady was doing this. And another, I mean, they, they don't, no one be saying names most of the time. So, but this one, book of John, will tell you information, details. And you will see that, okay, this is, you know, firsthand. Because he was the apostle that was closest to the Savior. So, and then he wrote this book. Okay. So don't worry right now about the, the, you know, the technicalities of what was his name and in different language and whatever. Just say, read the book of John, get the information from there, especially where the Savior is talking. Then you, you know, because he talks a lot in there. Okay. And then the other thing is this book will give you more details on behind the scenes events. Like I just said now. Because most of the time when the Savior went to separate himself, you know, to do some little thing on the side, he'll take this disciple and then take James and Peter. Okay, so you, you'll know that, okay, this information is really from somebody who was close. Okay, the other thing is, third thing is, this is the only book that was written by the apostle himself, except the spiritual revelations book, because the revelation book is very spiritual. We'll talk about it too. So this is the only book. That was written by the apostle himself. The other books were written by people who hear say, like the book of Matthew. I know Matthew was one of the apostles. So a lot of people think that the book of Matthew was written by Matthew, but no, it was written by somebody else. I mean, as you can see, I'll, I'll pull up something that shows you that this book of Matthew was written by somebody else. Okay. So you don't want to uh, um, start with a book that was not written by somebody, by the you know, horse's mouth. A book that was written by Math, I mean, by, by the one of the apostles that was working with the Savior, that's the book of John. And the only book is the book of John. Okay. The other ones, Luke was, you know, some by doctor who was walking around there, was a friend of Paul. And uh, Paul was not even one of the 12, too. He was not one of the 12. He was somebody who was there, too, in the, at the time. So he wrote a book himself, too. And then, and then he wrote five books, Hebrews, and you know, he wrote 14 books actually in the, in the New Testament. That's a lot. But he was not one of the two. And then there was Luke, there was Mark. Mark was also one of the scribes who were there, you know. In Bantu, they used to call them Mama Palani, Mama Palani scribes. So he was one of the scribes in there, Mark. And then the, um, who other one? You know, all the other books. I mean, Jude was one of people who liked, say, the Savior. He says that he was the Savior's brother. Jude is a guy. So Jude was, was one of the Savior's brothers, but we know, I mean, the Savior did not even choose him as to be one of his 12. So he did not walk with him as his 12 did. So he's not one of the 12. Get James, first James, second James, and you got all those first John, second John, third John. Those Johns are, are, are 
the, the Pope John, not the John, this, this John we're talking about, this, uh, those are Pope Johns, and Peter is that same Peter, one of the Roman people. So it's not the Peter, the jovial Peter. You actually see that. When you read the book of John, you start seeing the characters of these 12. And you, when you start reading now the book of Peter, the, like the first Peter said, you see, no, 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 that's not the same guy who used to be jumping. Hey, 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 I'll do this. Can I walk on the water with you? Can I just, no, 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 not me. You know, he had that character, that comedian kind of a character, Peter. Now, if you read the book of Peter, first Peter, you'll see a lawyer all of a sudden, no, no, concupiscent. He'd be talking like Paul. Then you know, okay, that's one of Paul's people. Okay, so that, that's how you will. So if you read the book of John first and understand Word for word and read the characters. You mean get to understand it deeply because the weight of all the, the, the New Testament sits on this one book, only one book. I mean, that's how really unfair the Romans were. Only gave us one book because the revelation is spiritual. I mean, it's, it's talking about something that comes with 10 horns. It's got seven heads. It's, it's confusing. Okay. It's confusing for somebody who's a starter because it's very spiritual. So this book, when the one, the book of John, that's why I'm recommending it first, because it's not as spiritual as the, because we only got two books, Revelations and this book of John. That's all from the horse's mouth. Every other book in the New Testament is from hearsay, people walking around and then it's, it's not from the horse's mouth, from the people who are actually walking with the Savior. Okay. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm saying read this book first, the book of John. And understand it really, really good. Okay? Now, the next one, when you now understood the book of John, okay? Go on to Old Testament. Run to the Old Testament and read the book of Isaiah. Okay? The book of Isaiah. Now, you'll find it. Remember the page and find it there. Now, why the ne next book is book of Isaiah is because the father, the creator himself, talks in that book. Okay? He really pours out his heart. In that book, okay, talking to Isaiah, talking about the future of the humankind, and and the, his feeling about the bad human behavior is shown with the children of Israel. Okay, so in this book, really, you'll see how 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 hurt the father is. Okay, and he actually speaks it out. Okay, and in this same book, you'll get to see how the father, the creator, visions the future of humankind and the children of Israel. Okay, so in this book, this book really shows the future because the, the father spoke to uh, Isaiah and told him what the future of humankind is, why, why he thinks he wants this to happen and what kind of um, interventions he's got planned, lined up for the uh, humankind and how the children of Israel, what, you know. So this book is really going to give you that kind of a background on what the father's vision is for the humankind in future. Okay, and why? Because the father also says that why this is what they've done, this is what they, and this is therefore what's going to happen with them going forward for generations. You know, it's 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 a book that shows you the future. It's not a book that you can cut off and say mm, it's Old Testament. He talks about future in that book. Okay, even the same book talks about there is a savior that's going to come. He's the government is going to be the government upon his shoulders and. He, it talks about the Savior himself, that the Father said, okay, I'm going to send somebody to die for these people for their sins because they, there's no way they can redeem themselves from their sins right now. You know, so the Father is speaking himself in this book, okay? So you can, you know, that's the next book you want to read. And then the third thing, you get an underst to understand the reasons behind the activities in the New Testament, in John, etc., as was envisioned and spoken by Isaiah. Okay, so in this book, you'll understand exactly what's going on in the New Testament and why. And you start seeing, oh, that's what Isaiah was talking about. So all the things that Isaiah is saying and the father is talking to Isaiah, saying, Isaiah, write this, this, write. Make sure you don't forget this part, right? Include it in that book. So all those things, those are the things that you start seeing when you start. You read that when you now you already now read the New Testament book of John. You start saying, "Oh, that's why these things are happening." Even the Savior start quoting the Isaiah too when he starts quoting in the New Testament. So you start comparing the two. It will start the whole Bible thing now will start to make sense to you because you read the book of John. You understand it now. What's going on in here? 
And when you start to read the book, the book of Isaiah, and you see, oh, that is what the father was talking about when he said this and this. Now it started happening when in the book of John, when this happened in the New Testament. Okay, so then it will keep you motivated because now you can see the stuff you already read. It's like now you know stuff. Okay, then you're reading in Isaiah and you're seeing the father, what the father is saying, and you, you get to even understand his character as part of the thing. Okay, so and then the third one. Now, this the third one is sort of you, you already know almost half if not 80% of scripture already, if you just know the Isaiah and, and, and book of John, you already know almost 80% of what you need to know, to know scripture, okay? Not just the Bible books, people handing on books. I'm talking about scripture now, the underlying uh, father stuff. I'll, I'll explain later. So anyway, so now the third one is the major prophet's book. Okay, now the major prophets were Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nehemiah, Lamentations, you know, all that list in there. So you can read all of those books because all of those books are as important as each other. Even though they will, a lot of them will show you the same, it's the same father talking, but he's saying different things in different situations. Okay, so all those different situations are applicable, are things that we go through. Okay, now, because a lot of them, is, the father is, is putting punishments that are long-lasting or everlasting punishments or, or everlasting benefits or everlasting promises in these books. So it, it's not just things that happened at the time and it ended. It's things that happened then and then the father made a ruling that stays on forever because of what happened then. Okay, so so now these books in the old in this Old Testament, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Daniel, read all of those. Okay, so now the reason is you get a broad understanding about the nature of the Father, the Creator. Now, what He likes, what He hates, what's abominable to Him, and and what the children of Israel were supposed to have behaved like, and what they didn't do. And why the father then was angry with them and, you know, all sorts of kind of things like that. Okay? So that's what you learn about. So the creator speaks himself in this book. That's the main important thing. Okay? And then number two is with understanding of the creator's character, the interests and the visions of his future, you won't get easily deceived. Because now when you, you understand the, the character of the father, his interest in his vision of the future. Now, whatever other book you read in the New Testament, and because that's where a lot of deception is in the New Testament. So when you start reading Paul's vision, say talking about there's no difference between the children of Israel and the Greeks and the Gentiles. Everybody is the same as long as you all believe in the Savior. And I'm saying, no, no, no. Now, you will see that you will say, no, no, no. It won't make sense. Whatever Paul is saying, it won't make sense. First of all, you will see that now the father sanctified only the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, sanctified them, redeemed them, consecrated them. You know, it was a full ceremony in the, I think it's, it's, the, it's one of the uh, first books. So it was a full. So you'll see that now there's no way that they can be equal to the other nations. Okay. So, so with that kind of understanding, you'll start distilling all kinds of deceptions that are thrown your way. Okay, and then when every, anybody else in the New Testament also talking about, no, the Savior did this, like the Apocrypha, a typical example, these other books that uh, they say they've been found, discovered lately in the, uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Then when you start reading those, you'll see, you know, the Savior, there's no way the Savior could be making fun of the, um, um, what do you call this? The fun of the apostles. The Savior could never make, you know, because these Apocrypha give you a different character as opposed to what you will be, you have read here. So you, you won't be easily deceived. That's the point. Okay. If you have this background. Okay. So, and then the third one is, oh, so this is the third book you read. Now the fourth one is the book of Moses. So that's where you get all the law. So the first five books of Moses, because now you need to understand now why the father is doing what he's doing. Why are the children, what, what have the children of Israel broken? And what's the relationship of the father with the children of Israel? 
Okay. So now in these five books, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, you'll see in the Bible, the first five books, that's all you worry about. The first five books that were written by Moses, you'll see that, oh, okay, this is where the father started, you know, his relationship with the humankind and started choosing the children of Israel. Why? You know, all that. Then you get an understanding on where you stand. You stand. Okay. Now, why the book of Moses? To know the foundation of humankind and foundation of the principles of nature. Okay. How humankind were designed to behave. So you don't get caught up in, in all illuminati things where they're talking about people are, you know, reincarnated and you, you don't be caught up in all of that mess. You, you just understand, oh, this is how the Father created everything. There's no evolution or anything here. This how, and this is with the rules that he put in place for humankind, everybody. This is how he did his thing. And you'll also understand, number two, the background in the relationship of the Father with the children of Israel. Then you see how children of Israel are separate from everybody else. And that stays forever. So the children of Israel are not the same as everybody else. The father even says in one of those books that he will sacrifice Ethiopians, sacrifice any nation for the children of Israel so the children of Israel can stay alive. He will give to die any nation. I mean, it's in there. That shows how the father really loves the children of Israel. So you, you start to pick up that no, there's no way children of Israel could be equated with any nation. You'll, you'll pick it up there, that they are separate, unique, and, and really, really, really the Father's people. And, and anything that crosses the children of Israel crosses the Father himself, and it gets punished. It, get, it don't escape any punishment. It's, it's really serious. Okay? You'll pick it up from those five books, too. And the other thing is the importance of the Creator's law and how, where, and when it applies that is the whole law applicable to all forever through all generations. Then you will see in those five books that no, it's not just giving the law. It says when and where it's applicable throughout your generations. This is what you're supposed to do forever. That's what the father is saying. You're supposed to do forever throughout your generations. Okay. It's not just one thing. You'll pick it up there. Cause if you don't know these five books, when you start reading or going to church on Sunday, wherever you go to church, trying to listen, they might give tell you something and you might misunderstand it and think, oh, okay, everything is nailed on the cross. I, I only got to believe in the Savior and then that's it. And you forget about the Father's law, okay? And and you think that it was just there pointing to the Savior and the Savior died, you're covered. No, you're not. You have to carry your cross. You have to also make sure you keep the law, keep the commandments of the Father. So the, the, net, the fourth one is the impact of the presence of the Father, the importance of the Father's creator, the creator, authority and esteem. Now, that these five books are showing exactly that the whole earth trembles, things fly away, earthquake, just in the presence of the Father. So that shows the esteem of the Father. Now, if people be blaspheming the Father in front of you, you should be scared. Because now you will have read in here that, man, there's no way I can bless him. This man, things tremble in his presence. So you will pick up how serious his esteem is. The earth runs, the, everything runs just in his presence. So make sure then you read the books of Moses and understand them really good. Because they will give you that, that information, that knowledge. Okay. Then the last book. No, not the last, sorry. The fifth book that you read is the Revelations. Now, the Revelations is very spiritual. Now, at this point in time, I assume that you will have read all the books of the law, read all the prophets, read all the, not all, read the important prophets, the important um, New Testament book, which is the John. Okay, so with that information, you are ready to tackle the Revelation, because Revelation will be very spiritual. So it will take time to, for you to get into Revelation. Don't jump into Revelation. It will be confusing and disillusioning. So when you read Revelation, that's after you've gotten the background of the other books I just recommended here. Because it's very spiritual, as I said. Okay? It's not word for word. It will tell you seven churches and you'll be confused. Thinking about it was churches that existed then. 
And I'm telling you, no, 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 it's not church that existed then. It's, it's, the, it's the embodiment of the doctrine. That's what the church is. Church is people, it's the, it's the people that are carrying the doctrine. They are classified into seven groups called seven churches. So th this revelation is very spiritual. Okay. And even when you read it, you want to discuss, talk with somebody, you know, do some little. So it's really, so when you are at this point, that's when you are a little more advanced in your reading. Okay. So try studying first and then you take the revelations later. Okay. So let's say now you are at the point of revelations. Why book of revelations? It is the future events. Now that's the prophecy right there. It's the future events currently happening right now and are still happening. So you can now even compare um, entirely with the major prophets and everything else we've read before. Okay. So that's the book of revelations prophets because the old, the prophets, Daniel and them were talking about things that are still to happen, are happening and still happen. Okay. But they didn't understand it. Like Daniel was asking, but father, what does this mean? And father, no, no, don't worry about it. It's not for your time. It's for the future. The people in the future will understand because they would be going through that then. But you, Daniel, close the book. Don't worry about it. Just write and just close it when you're done. Okay. So in those times, so when you start comparing what Daniel wrote, which was for the future now, and you see in Revelations, then you start to see, oh, okay. Because in the book, when Daniel was writing, there was no Revelations or anything. It was just Daniel writing. Okay. So this book of Revelation, you compare it. Okay. Then, you you know, you, you, you start to understand clearer and better when you cross-reference. And then the other thing is the only book that can be understood through the spirit of the Father. So if you read and understand this book, then chances are you got the spirit of the Father. Because this book you cannot understand. Not one phrase, not even one paragraph is simple. Everything is, is prophetic in this book. That's why it says in the, in the Bible, it says, Blessed are you is, tho is those who read and understand this book. It's the only book that it says, opens up with, Blessed are you if you read and understand this book. Only book that says that. Okay. Excuse me, because it's the only book that is spiritually discerned. Okay. So now the third thing you got to read this book is it's the only book where the father himself speak directly to the apostles. I'm talking about the father and I'm not the savior. The father himself talks to the apostles directly. Okay, because it's the Father who says, I am so Sonini, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. That's the Father talking there. Okay, so Nini, that's the Father talking. So it's, it's the only book where the Father is talking, and the Father, you know, just to show you it's the Father, he, he does his things that he used to do in the Old Testament where he brings all these visions to make a point. So he used visual um, visual um, things to make a point. So when he's trying to explain to John in the revelations, he's showing him a whole lot of you know animals, a lot, whole lot of visions to, to make a point to show him what he's trying to say. That's the same way that he did in Ezekiel, same way that he did in, in um, Jeremiah, Daniel in them. So if you then you know okay it's the same person who's communicating in Revelations, same person communicated in, in the Old Testament, Daniel, Jeremiah in them. Okay. Not the same not the son. The son was was saying what the father is saying. But the son didn't come up with there's an animal, there's a thing with seven heads and no, he didn't talk like that. He just made examples like parables or people who say figure of speeches and stuff. That's what the son did. But the son did not make the visual illustrations. Okay. He made parables. So, but the father is the only one that is doing the visual. He gives you a vision. Actually, if you see something, then you know what he's talking about. Okay. So that's why I'm saying it's the only book, the revelation where the father himself is the one that's involved. He's talking. Okay. To the, to the men and even showing him visions so he can write something. It's the only book where he, the father himself, he, he come back and talk. Okay. So, yeah. So you, you want to really, you know, you know, understand this book when you get to the point of reading it. Okay. Then the next one is now the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Those are more like, um, laid back where the father is laid back. 
they like chit chatting about life skills. They say life skills books. That's what I call them. So they're talking about our day to day. You know, if you do this, if you get on, if you are, if you say something wrong to somebody, if you do something wrong to somebody, you don't have to tell him. You know, it, it says stuff like that. You don't have to tell him because if you tell him, he might get hurt. So it's better he don't know. You know, keep it. You know, because if you tell him, he might just get hurt. And you know, so so it's, it's like life skills. Okay, it's things that we deal with day to day, day to day. Okay, so if you take some somebody's thing you didn't understand, you know, it was by mistake, just bring it back with a little something, you know, just to keep the person quiet, you know. So it's things that we go through every day, every day. It's not just law and you know, big things. No, it's things we go through every day in our life. So that's why I'm saying these books are more like life skill books where the father is laid back about life in general, giving us friendly advice day to day, you know. So you can easily really... Um, apply the principles in these books in your day-to-day -day event. You can relate to it better, okay? All right, so now this, the, that's the point of the Proverbs and Proverbs and, and Ecclesiastes, okay? So if, so if you read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, if you read Proverbs, then you, you get that day-to-day, -day, you know, understanding on this is what you should do. Then the next one, the next one is, after you've read now the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, you read any other book in the Old Testament, okay? I say any other now because I'm confident that you actually distill false doctrine from true doctrine. Wrong things and new, you know. Th but in the Old Testament, there isn't really much false doctrine because it's more like historical events that happen. So it's, more, it's less preaching than, you know, history. So it's history more than preaching so so in the old so when you read any other old testament you know here now the remaining books are sort of they repeat what you've already gathered from the major prophets the book of moses and the, so you already have the gist the information the bulk of the important stuff so the other books in the that you haven't read yet that are still in the old testament will repeat what you already know okay but in different situations, you know, you get historical. It's more like stories now. Small stories, what happened here, what the, the father say when this happened. So, but it won't be really new stuff, but it will be things that, you know, you already know. Like the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, the father will be talking life skills too, a lot of the time. Because it was written by David, you know, I mean Solomon. He, is it David or Solomon? No, it was written by David. After you know, he, you know, he went through a hard time because the father really punished him for his bad behavior when he was king, thinking he's all dead. So then David started writing down, and the father be you know replying here, and David be writing. So it's it's um it's more like life skills because it's life skills that David should have and you know carried on. But you will see those life skills are more or less the same as what you pick up in Ecclesiastic and Proverbs too. Okay, so, but then the other books in the Old Testament, same thing. Obadiah, those are minor prophets, and, you know, Melikai, Melikai, is in Melikai, Bantu language, Melikai, because he stood for the home, children of Israel, home, household. So that's why they call, the people call Melikai, you know, Melikai. So, so that's what this, so the other, you know, so you carry on reading, 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 and, you know, just, just for all extra information, but you don't really have to. If you get, if you got the information you already got now, you just want to enhance your your knowledge. You know, know more Bible stories that are really bearing what you already know. Then you just carry on with the other Old Testament books, okay? And you know, you you understand. It will give you more background too, but uh, not new information as I said, but. It would be good to, for you to read it. And then the next one will be any other book in the New Testament now. Now, that's where the dangers are because that's where the deception is. The false doctrine lies, okay? Because as you already know, bulk of the books, they, you know, old, in the Old Testament, probably there's about how many books? 20, 20 what, 29 or 20 something like that in the Old Testament. So the books in the Old Testament are are a lot of them like it's only one 
two is one book of John and the Revelations. Only book of John and Revelations were written by the first hand people. Okay. Otherwise, every other one is was written by either hearsay or Roman people or I would other people. I call them random people. So, and a whole lot of deception is in there and misunderstanding of what they saw and stuff is in there. Okay. So now, but that's why it's important that you do this last after you've gotten all the right background. So you can actually see now, this is false doctrine. This is true doctrine. When you, at this point here, yeah, you, you, you should be, you know, be able to separate the two. Okay. Now, why at this point in the New Testament? Okay. With the background from the books of John, you've already written in them, in all, in all the other, the other, the other will repeat the same information. Okay, like I just said. So with the information already read from the Old Testament and the book of John and Revelation, you are now ready to distill, that means separate, the loads of false doctrines and, you know, and easy Paul's doctrine, Paul's epistles and other books, the New Testament written by hearsay, eyewitnesses, like I was just explaining to you now. Because a lot of the New Testament books are from eyewitnesses and hearsays in them. Okay, now you need to note only that only the book of John and Revelations are from the real first-hand apostles. Okay, now you and you when when whilst you're reading, you need to focus on the past where the Father Himself is talking and the Savior Himself is talking. Okay, all right. Okay, where are we now? Um, you need to know the difference between Bible and Scripture. Now, what I just went through with you was only just number one. All this talking, I feel so tired today. All this talking was just covering number one. Know the Bible books where to start and know the essence of it. Okay? And the contents of each one of those books. So we've covered number one. We just covered. Now number two was know the difference between the Bible and the scripture. Okay? So that means read the scripture within the Bible. Okay, now I'm getting into details on what am I, what do I mean by that? Okay, now remember, the Bible is a compilation of books. I keep reiterating the same thing. Bible is a compilation of books, like a person called John, a person called Job, a person called Timothy, a person called Jude. You know, they gathered and went to Roman office and say, excuse me, sir, I got this book, man. I was around when I, when the Savior was walking around. I know what I saw in this side. Of I wrote it down. And the Romans said, okay, put all these books. Everybody put the books down there. And then we're going to meet on a Sunday, say Monday, whatever. We meet and we'll decide which books to, to, to put, um, to include in the Biblios, in the one compilation of books called Bible. Okay. So that's what happened. So a Bible is a compilation of all the different books from people. Okay. Now, credible and non-credible, but it's just books. Okay. Some rumor. Now I'm saying rumor. Rumor is saying was is saying that the twelve apostles could not bring their books there because they were not going to be included. So they didn't write their names on the books that they wrote. Okay. They just wrote took the book in there. And then the, the Romans, somebody in the Roman office put the name on it. Okay. Like the book of John, which clearly was written by Judas, but they book, they wrote book of John in there, but at least it's one of the 12 in any way. Okay. So, so now, so the Bible is the books people brought in. Okay. Now let's look at scripture. Scripture is deduced from the Bible. Okay. So, is that underlying now okay let's focus on so the scripture is deduced from the bible okay when you read the bible books you pick up one common message one common story one common character okay one common principles common so whatever you pick as common you group it into one single story that's called scripture okay so especially where the savior is talking and the father is talking in all these books when they're quoting, this is what he said, this is what he said. If they're talking about the Savior said, in each one of these books, then you know that carries scripture. Because whatever they said, it will be repeated the same way in another book. It won't be different. So that is scripture. Okay? 
So here's a, 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 a clinical descript, definition of what scripture is. Okay, um, Wikipedia has got their description. Let me read mine. It's an underlying, consistent, fixed story inspired by the Father, the Creator, and it's cited within the events and the stories written by the writers in the books of the Bible. Okay? So that's what the Bible is. I mean, the scripture is. So the scripture is within the Bible. So you read all these Bible books and Bible books we're talking about. I saw this idea. But the one underlying story, which is the same principle, laws, rules, things, it won't clash because that would be scripture. Okay? All right? I've got videos. You can watch my channel. I've got videos detailing everything I just spoke about. Okay? So my channel got about 60, 76 videos. I make videos all the time. 76 videos explaining detail of what I'm talking about right now. Okay? So now next is learn to separate false doctrine from true doctrine. Okay? Now that's closely tied from scripture versus the Bible. And know now to separate between the false doctrine and true doctrine. So now focus on the writings, Father himself talks, Savior himself talks, okay? All right, so now the false doctrine and the true doctrine. Now, most of the true doctrine, as I said, is found where the Father is talking. Now, in those books, New, New Testament books and Old Testament, the Old Testament books, a lot of them, the Father is talking himself in almost all these books in the New Testament. So there's, I mean, the Old Testament. So the whole lot of um, scripture in the Old Testament. New Testament is not the Father talking. You know, I mean, none of the Paul's epistles, Paul's letters, they call them epistles. I don't know why they call letters epistles, but none of the Paul's epistles has the Father talking or the Savior talking. Okay, so you will just see from there that okay, now nah, I'm not sure about these ones. Okay. But then if you see, if you read the books like Book of John and the few parts in Matthew, you know, you'll see here in the, the Savior is talking. Then you can take those seriously. Okay. All right. So, but then you have to make sure that you compare it with the real, because Book of Matthew was not written by Matthew. I was reiterate this one. So you don't want to take that as first hand because you don't know who is that guy who wrote that book. And then the book of John was written by one of the apostles, so you can trust that whatever is being quoted in there. Okay? Okay, now let's carry on to... Um, so, oh, I'm so tired, I can't believe I'm carrying on with this. Okay, so the New Testament versus the Old Testament. So make sure you, you, you separate false doctrine from true doctrine. I, show, I told you how to separate the two. True doctrine... Father and Son is talking, okay? False doctrine, some hearsay that is clashing. Any, where you see a clashing between what the person is saying, talking about, and what the Father and the Son is so, saying, is quoted in the books that are written by the 12 apostles, which is the book of John and Revelation. If there's any clash with those books, then you know now, Okay? That's not right. And if there's any clash with the Old Testament, it's not right either, where the Father was talking. Okay? That's something wrong in there. Okay? Then, number five, number four, watch some YouTube videos and Google some information. You know, that's why I said I made it easier for you that I put some videos together and put it in my channel. So all you got to do is just watch my channel. Okay? So, number four, you say watch YouTube videos. Google the information about we are in the last days because those videos will show you what's going on now and you can start seeing the things that are happening in your days, in your neighborhood, in your country. You see, this is what's happening here and this is what was written in the Bible. Then you start comparing and seeing and you can be your legal prophet now to foresee and tell people, guys, this is what's going to happen because it's written in the book of Daniel that Trump is going to do this, is going to do that. And it won't say Trump, of course, but the last king. And you already even explain to people, oh, the last king because this in, in Revelations, it said this. You know, you start cross-referencing yourself. Okay, but you, you will have already done your reading first. 
Okay, so I'm giving you a, a guide into but now if you're only just starting now, it's not too late, but you will be interjected by a whole lot of deceptions that will disillusion because the devil don't want anybody starting now. It's going to be really hard for people who are starting now because you will get spiritual attacks and that spiritual attacks will be geared at disillusion you so you do not go forward and go backwards instead and be calling on Jesus, all the Greek gods. Which you, you, the fact that you're trying to study is because you're trying to find the truth. So the devil is trying to make you stop trying to find the truth. So if you're starting now, you better get strong and be focused that you are going to get through with this and finish up to the end. Now, I got videos for you to watch if you need more information about some items in the, in the scripture. Okay, that you are reading in the Bible. And... There are a whole lot of other people who are posting stuff on YouTube and Google and, and the library searches. Now, there's true and there's false in there, okay? Some people are honest and true, not deceived. Some people are trying to be sincere, but they are deceived. They're just deceived. They're telling lies, but they don't know it's lies because they're deceived. Some are just lying, okay? So you get all this mixture. So that's why I'm saying, if you are just a starter, zoom into my channel, because that is all true in there. There's no deception or anything because I've been doing researches for years. Okay? And I got things that back my information up in there. And you can still ask questions. If you're confused, you don't understand something. Go ahead and ask me questions. I read my channel. I read my questions, people. And I, and I respond immediately. Okay? I respond immediately, and you, you will start to see things shaping up. But at first, everything is going to go negative in your life, like spiritually. That means biblical. It's going to go negative because the devil is trying to get you out of trying to study the Bible the way you are trying to do now. Okay, The fact that you're watching this channel is because you're trying to be serious about studying the Bible. So now if you had made that decision... Go ahead and dive into it full force. Don't be halfway, halfway there. Because once you're halfway there, the other half is going to draw you away. The negative half now is going to draw you away. Because the devil doesn't want you to do this. So when you started, when you, if you start doing this, be serious from get-go. Because the devils have multiplied. Just focusing on people like you. Multiply. You can even see how evil the movies are now. Everything has, the demons have been doubled in any place. Doubled. If not million times multiplied. Okay. So the devil is really working hard because he know he got a few months now left. Months. I'm saying months, not years. He got a few months left. He knows that, but he don't know when. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. You can watch my other video. But the elect of the father like me and them, other people who know themselves. We know the year and the month, and I'm telling you, we got a few months. Watch my other video for in more in-depth in information. So it's for your benefit. Actually, let me tell you, because if I tell you the number of months we got left, it might speed up your trying to research. Because if you don't know, you will perish. My people, that's what Amos Book of Amos says, he's one of the minor prophets. He say, the father is, so, is talking there. He say, Amos, write in that book, in your book there. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. You, you, you get what I mean? So you have to have that knowledge because if you don't, you will perish. Not because you don't know. You will perish because you will be deceived. And you end up receiving the mark of the beast because you don't even know what the mark of the beast is. Because you start thinking, oh, mark of the beast is some computer chip that you're going to get on your arm and your forehead. Of course, you're going to refuse that. Then you don't get the mark. Now, the mark of the beast is not just that. Mark of the beast is the whole system, the Western system. If you receive the mark of the beast, you'll start going to Sunday to church instead of the seventh day holy that the Father said. You'll start doing all the things that are showing that you have received. You've embraced. Receive means embrace. You have embraced the system of the beast, which is the mark. The mark is your actions, is how you act around. So the mark of the beast, that's what it is. Now the seal of the father, 
is when you are sealed. Nothing in the beast world makes sense. You are sealed like you're covered. You, 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 you know, you've got a seal around you. So whatever they throw at you, trying to deceive you, won't just don't make sense to you. Not because you're trying to be mean or anything. It just don't make sense to you. It's like some if you don't smoke, smoke weed or drugs, somebody trying to sell you drugs. It's like, what are you talking about? Why should I be buying drugs? I don't know. That's how it won't make sense to you, the, the devil stuff. That's when you know you're sealed. And you start questioning things won't be comfortable to you. So things won't be comfortable to you if they are from the mark of the beast. And they won't be labeled, we are from the mark of the beast. No, mm -mm. It'll be stuff that just won't make sense to you. Like you'll start losing interest going to clubs, start losing interest in the stuff of the world. And, and nobody will have preached to you, but you'll just start losing interest. And, and that's when you know you are sealed. You've received the seal of the Father. Sonini Father. That's the name of Father. So when you are sealed, then you'll know, you'll feel it. And the people will actually feel you too. Okay? So watch my channel. I got a whole lot of information too about all of the stuff I'm talking about. Oh, now, I got to tell you, we got two months. From now on, two months. So because the return month of the, save, of the Savior now, the Father himself is the one returning. Father is returning in two months' time, April. 2017, 2017. That's when he's returning. Now, nobody knows the day nor the hour. Okay? The book of Matthew says that. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. Probably the, the same book. Maybe somebody was, but it's just that they deleted a whole lot of stuff. Maybe it went down to say, but the year and the month is known. But they're not saying anything about the year and the month. But I'm telling you, the year and the month, because the day nor the hour, uh, nobody will know. The father in Revelation says, he got up one morning and told the angels, angels, eh, let's go, the earth is ripe. Let's go reap. That's what the Revelation said. Now, the book of Revelations, you will have read it at this point. So you will, have, you will know, okay, he's talking about the future. So that's how the father is going to kickstart the return. But he won't tell, not even those angels, that angels tomorrow morning were going. No, he won't tell them. He just get up and won't say, it's time to go reap the earth. Now, we know that month will be April and that year will be 2017. That's the vision now I had. Okay, it's a dream. It was a dream. That's a dream I had. And none of my dream did not come true. So that's why I believe this one will happen and as I saw it in this dream. Okay. So you got two months to work out your research and everything else. So you better start go cracking now, right now as we speak. You better be trying to find out where Book of John is. Start reading it. And I'll recommend that you can start with, you know, King James, easier, easier Bibles. And a lot of people say, no, Bibles are full of the same. The information, the underlying gist will be the same. Which is a scripture. The stories will be distorted here and there, but just read scripture, okay? And watch my videos, because I, I, I can't repeat the same thing in the same video. There's a whole lot of other videos I've said the same things in that are helping you, okay? Bye.